Hey there viewers, and welcome back to the self made auto channel. Got our 2011 Chevrolet, it's a 1500. It's got the big 5.3 and the horn doesn't work. I've got us a wiring diagram here, which shows our two horns down here. Looks like we have a left and a right. Comes up on these green wires. When we come through, we have a horn relay, which is, see the PCB? It's the printed circuit board, so that's a relay we can't get to uh, easily. Uh, the power side is fed from a 175 amp fuse and then it comes out when the relay fires or closes rather it goes through uh, a fuse here depending on if it's a gas or diesel comes down uh, to control that we've got a couple ways to make the horn blow uh, one uh, body module can make it fire and the inflatable restraint so through the clock spring and then your standard horn button down here it looks like three if this is correct three different uh, contact points inside that horn switch uh, it goes through We've got a couple different options here it looks like we are going to be on number three you can see up here uh, without a steering wheel heater this thing's pretty plain Jane on the inside so through there up through this side through the clock spring and down but I did notice pulling it in we've got a pretty big clue so I hooked up our scan tool because I think we're going to need that possibly, but possibly not. But I plugged it in just to be on the safe side. So key on, engine off. We can see that, oh, it's a GMC, not a Chevrolet. <laughs> eh, same stuff. But that does not work. However, when I went to get in the vehicle, let's see here. Let me find the little flobber here. Oh, look at that, huh? All right, so that's a big clue right there, folks. Uh-oh, what's it gonna do? Oh, there's another big clue. That's handy. Frickin' aftermarket junk. It's got an aftermarket remote starter in it. Hit the clock three times. That's good, at least I didn't have the uh, oil all drained out of it. Reach in and hit the brake pedal. That's good. So that tells us they could probably, they're probably tapped into the horn wire. It's broken or something. What the frick? Why won't that shut off? Step on the brake. Keys on. There. Jeez Louise. Stupid aftermarket junk. Anywho, looking at our newly acquired knowledge, what can we say that we know? I just cut our testing methods right in half here, folks. Horns check put a big check mark on them those are good relays good that fuse is good that fuse is good all these wires are good body module check that wire is good good so basically we just narrow down to either this component so our switch or inflatable restraint or a broken wire from some crappy aftermarket alarm system that's put in it or a remote start so i would say if this connector is accessible, that should be our next step is to get as close to the inflatable restraint module as possible. Uh, if we can pull column covers and see the back side of the wires coming out of it. Um, because likely, if uh, best tried, tried to tap in the remote start somewhere, it would likely be between the body module and you know the inflatable restraint would be my guess if they had to cut into something uh, to tie into the horn. So I would go right up here, this way here we can say, you know, is it a clock spring or is, is it a broken wire? Well, I've got the column covers popped off. So here is our mobilizer, a little ring around the key. And then uh, here's where Best Buy has been in here. we got the classic wire nuts. <laughs> uh, this appears to be the bottom connector of our clock spring. And I think it was a tan wire if I remember correctly. So. I think what we'll do, see if this is, see if we can figure out how these connectors come out of here. We've got a connector right here. Let's see if we can wiggle that one out. This does have the uh, recalled airbag in it, so we want to keep our face away from hurling shrap metal. Let's see, we have a tan and a black there. And then there's another set of wires over here. 
tan and black. That is pinned according to this. Though my reading glasses, but A and B. Let's go grab the diagram, see if that's right, see if we can just jumper those two and see if the horn blows. Well, let's see, and according to the diagram, A and B are it. So A should be the control to the relay there, or B should be the tan, and then A should be the ground. So I got us a couple probers here. We're just going to very gingerly front probe, just touch it. And then we'll touch these two together and see if it scares us. So there, that answers the question. Nothing to do with Best Buy. Even though we sat here trash talking them about their crimp on wire nuts. That tells us 100% definitively that the clock spring's bad. So that's not, a, not too big a deal. So we'll plug this thing back in if we can. That's plugged in. Horn still does not work. The only thing you could do at this point, folks, is pull the airbag and check the actual switch itself. But what are the odds of that, folks? What I find interesting is the other buttons are cruise control. That still lights up. Of course, we can't tell if any of the rest of it works, but we got some other buttons over here. We've got radio. Yep, so that works. Does this one work? Yeah, it mutes the audio. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that button works. It toggles up through the radio stations. Kind of interesting that we would lose just one tiny section of that clock spring. Hmm. These things are a pain in that hoo-hoo to take off. Uh, let's see. I just wanted... <laughs> let's have a look at this, folks. What are the odds, right? I said I just wanted to have a little look-see behind here to make sure everything's plugged in. I don't know if it's a separate connector, but um, do you see what I see? Look at that. I thought it was kind of odd that, because this is the horn button, this center piece here, and they are correct. It is three contacts, so a contact there, contact there, and a contact there. However, this thing needs to be grounded Look what's, look what is off. And I, I think that's aftermarket. It doesn't even look like a factory. Clippy do dad. It doesn't, because it doesn't fit worth a poo. Are we skipping past it? I think we are. I have to give it the old crimp. Yeah, it's going in the blade, but look at that. What are the odds, huh? See? Good thing we had a look. Just want to make sure, are we going behind that blade or are we actually going into it? No, it's actually going into it. Who in the heck would have been in here and for what? Unless they were doing the airbag recall. I'd say we squeeze her down. See if I can do this one-handed. We just want to squeeze them terminals, squeeze that down a little bit so it has a little more grip. Hopefully not too much because we still have to be able to get it on. Oops. Yeah, now she's on with some tension. So when you can see, this is where the horn, the tan wire comes up through that clock spring. So. All right, we're good. Now, if you're trying to remove your airbag, you've got the holes in the side, on the outside of the steering wheel. Use a, I was using, I think, a four millimeter Allen key, and it comes in, and you've got to feel around for these clips, they're a pain. And then that retainer right there, you see how you push that in? But it's easy to see with the steering wheel off, but basically I come in, I, I just keep it wiggling. <laughs> So I feel the tip hit something there, and then you kind of you can kind of jiggle up and down, but you'll 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 hear that clip when you're on it. You'll hear that from outside, and then you'll just push in and pull out on the airbag. So we should be good now to put it back together. Make sure the airbag wires go back into the center there. I set the camera down. 
make darn sure this that you don't pinch the airbag wires in there. Make sure you unhook the battery and all that stuff. There, look at that. This guy's gonna be he's gonna be happy. Whoa! Went for a little ride. Well, there you have it, folks. Pretty easy. Uh, the column covers on these Chevrolets, they don't have any screws in them, or at least this one doesn't. And I see that sometimes they have a screw in the bottom, sometimes they don't. If they don't, they just they just literally snap together. It's like a Lego. Pop the halves off. So that's not a big deal. I uh, don't know why somebody was in there or what they were in there for. Uh, the only reason I decided to look is because the odds of the clock spring breaking just that single ground feed or uh, the control the signal wire from the airbag switch here was pretty improbable uh, not likely to happen you know our volume buttons worked our cruise control turned on and off there was no airbag light on the dash so you know before you pull the trigger on a you know probably a 200 plus dollar clock spring it only took a minute to have a look um you because you just don't know you don't know who had their fingers in there or what they were doing or why they were doing it I have no idea. The steering wheel pad here and stuff looks pretty dirty. I doubt it's, you know, been, uh, I do know this truck has an active recall, but I doubt it's been done yet, so I don't think that was probably done. Who knows? Uh, just another piece of the puzzle. But the good news is uh, no parts required. We got it fixed and a little bit of reasonable deduction uh, using, you know, the fob to trigger the horn so we knew which part of the circuit was good or functional. Um, if that didn't work, we would have took a different approach. You know, we would have gone to the fuse and uh, things like that. And we probably would have powered the fuse up at that point with some power to see, you know, are the, are the horns good? Is the ground for the horns, the wiring and all that? And that would have left us with the relay back. So uh, easiest thing to do is just split your system in half if you can. So and that's essentially what we did just through logic. And that's it. So why don't you guys be logical and go down there in that comment section. Questions, comments, concerns. Uh, put what you think they, somebody was doing in there. Maybe it was the Best Buy guy. Who knows? <laughs> and just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.